Good morning to those that are watching uh, live via Facebook. We have a great message this morning that Pastor Vic will be bringing you. I just want to go ahead and open up in prayer. I hope you have a great Sunday today. So let's go ahead and get started. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for today, that you gave us another day to live. We thank you for your word, that your word is written on the tablet of our hearts. Father God, we just pray right now that those that are watching, those that are here today, my God, we continue to open their ears and eyes, Father, receive the word, my God, and that you would minister to them today. So, Father, as we get started, we ask that your Holy Spirit would be present. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I want to go ahead and welcome my husband, Pastor Vic, who is taking his last guzzle of coffee. Come on up, Pastor Vic. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Yes, we all need that coffee in the morning. Amen? Amen. amen. Listen, I just want to um, start off by saying... Happy belated 4th of July. We celebrated 4th of July uh, yesterday and, and, oh, and this day. So, listen, uh, I don't know about all of you guys. Uh, it's not really a big thing for me. Uh, don't care for all the fireworks and stuff. I kind of end up uh, getting anxiety, kind of like my dogs, and uh, we have to comfort one another. But praise God, we made it through the night. <laughs> Hallelujah. But uh, today, <clears throat> today, I'm going to just start off and let you know, we're going to be speaking out of the book of Ephesians, chapter 5. We're going to go through verses 1 through 14. I always want to bring the Word of God, and I always want to read it for what it is. We're going to be reading out of the New Living Translation today. Amen? Amen. So um, just to let you guys know to follow along, uh, whether you have a tablet, your iPhones, or whatever. Uh, me, I just like the uh, so it's New Living Translation, and we're going to be talking about Ephesians. Living in the light is what I want to speak about today. Uh, my wife already opened up um, in prayer. Um, we will let you know how to contact us at the end of the service via Facebook or emails or whatever. And if you want to sow into our ministry, we deeply appreciate that as well. Um, we're in the process now that we're here that uh, we may be, be opening back up the city again. And um, so we're going to be looking for a new facility right now. We are settling into the new home that we're in. So this is a lovely backdrop that we have, and uh, we're grateful for that. The Lord is really providing, as he says he would in his word. So this morning, again, Ephesians chapter 5, 1 through 14. Um, and I'm going to have some help because uh, I like to move along quickly, and uh, I like to, when I read, I read slowly, and, you know, uh, I'm getting better uh, at doing this. So, uh, so praise the Lord. My wife is going to... Why Pastor Shannon is going to be uh, helping me out reading some scriptures. So living a life in the light. How can we live in the light while residing in such a dark world as we are today? The times today are so dark and it's prevalent uh, of what's going on. How can we live? as light, as children of the light, as not just believe, I say this all the time, folks, it's not merely enough just to believe in Christ. He wants us to follow Him. He wants us to do our part, not just say, oh, okay, I believe, because let me share this, I say it again all the time. Even <laughs> Satan believes. Why do you think he opposes them? Why do you think the church uh, uh, of Satan, the, the, the Antichrist, the the uh, uh, devil worshipers, they oppose Christ. Yes. So that means they believe in him. Amen? Amen. So how can you oppose something that, if you don't believe? And, and we see all this darkness around us today. Just watch the news. Watch five minutes of the news. And you will just see how dark this world is if you haven't already done that. Uh, you, we're, just, we're living in prevalent times right now. It's... it's, it's uh, so how do we get back? How do we get back to living into the light to being what God has called us to be? Well, I think the Apostle Paul makes it very clear here in Ephesians. We're going to start off reading 5 through 7 right now. Uh, Pastor Shannon, go ahead and, and, and start reading, please. Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love following the example of Christ. 
He loved us. He offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. So, he starts off by saying, imitate God. Yes. Therefore, in everything we do. Now, let's be real. Even as pastors, everything we do is not an imitation of God or Christ. Transparency. We have to be real with ourselves. But here's the beautiful thing about the God that we serve. Jesus Christ gave himself up on the cross for our redemption, for our repentance. When we find that we're doing something wrong, we have to stop. Take notice of that. My kids and my wife, I tell you what, as a pastor, I have them hold me accountable. And they have no qualms of doing that. I'm telling That's you. Right. When I mess up, they are so quick to let me know. Not to knock me down, but to hold me accountable to be the man of God and the pastor that God has called me to be. You know, I have, I have uh, a bad time sometimes. Uh, I love to mess with my daughter, and, and uh, sometimes I can go a little overboard and, and give her a hard time. You know, I, I have fun with her and tease her and stuff. And then my wife got to get on me about course joking. And then I, I have to go back and remember, you know what? Is that what Christ would do? Is that what he would want me to do? You know? So don't ever think that you're above and beyond someplace. That's right. That you can't always go back, ask for forgiveness, and repent. It's called humbling yourselves, folks. Yes. When you know that you messed up and you blew it, humble yourself and repent and ask for forgiveness to those who, who you've heard. Words, yes. That's why the Bible says, hey, listen, words give life or death. Yes. What we speak can either build up or knock down, folks. So we have to be careful what we do. So he starts off by saying, imitate God in everything that we do. Yes. Follow what? The examples of Christ. Yes. You say, well, I'm one of the, the, one of the apostles. I never walked with Christ. Yeah, but you learn right here from the Bible. Remember I say it. The B-I-B-L-E. Uh, Basics and instructions before leaving earth. Yes. Follow what you read about Christ and be, let that be the example of what you need to do, folks. He set the example. We need to follow that. It says it here. He loved us so much he offered himself up as a sacrifice for us. Yes. A pleasing aroma to God. Yes. I'll be honest. There's a lot of time my aroma just stinks because of my attitude. Because of just being me, being stupid. You know? It stinks. Be honest. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with, with people, you know. Uh, I get criticized a lot from a lot of other pastors. I say, hey, you're too transparent, Pastor Vic. You shouldn't. But you know what? I'd rather be transparent to you so that I'm loved in heaven when I make it there and not be condemned or not be, you know, uh, in trouble with God for being false. I don't want God to say, Depart from me, I never knew you. Yes. I wanted to say, you know what, son, I understand you blew it, but what I loved about you is the fact that you <clears throat> owned up to it. My, one of the greatest pastors I ever served under and sat under was Pastor Rod Ritchie from Simi Valley, and, and uh, it's called Church was New Beginnings Christian Fellowship. He's the one that taught me. Him and a man named Paul Johnson taught me how to humble myself and grow up and show up. Yes. That's what I say. When you show up to church, you'll grow up. Pastor yes. Ryan, he's famous for saying that. When you show up, you grow up. Yes. And and I, man, hey, I'll tell you what, I think I still hold the record <clears throat> of new beginnings of being sat down as a usher more times than anybody. Yes. I don't say that proudly, but I, here's what I do say proudly, is no matter what happened on Friday and Saturday, I was in church on Sunday. Yes. I was in church on Sunday. And, and why? Because I followed the example what was taught to me. In the Bible. Humble myself. Let's get back to the scriptures. Let's pick up on verse 3. Amen? Let there be no sexual immorality, impurity, or greed among you. Stop. Right there. Okay, that's a big one. Let there be. Look at the world today. Everything you see, folks, is sold by sex. 
in moral sexual enhancement, you know, uh, uh, enticing, you know. These girls are wearing half of nothing. You see these guys with six pack, eight pack, no shirts, and you know, it's appealing to the girls' eyes. These, guys, these girls in the little bikinis, the guys are, ooh, so they want to go buy these products. And then they want to walk around, you know. We live in Sin City for a reason. God has us here for a reason. And there's a reason why it's called Sin City. They spend a week in here and you'll see. She says, sexual immorality right now is being pushed right now that, that it's okay to live together. It's okay to have kids and raise a family. It's okay, you know. No, it's not okay. It's immoral. It's immoral. We cannot live our lives that way. Let's continue on. Such sins have no place among God's people. Obscene stories, foolish talk, coarse jokes, these are not for you. But instead, let there be thankfulness to God. You can be sure that no immoral, impure, or greedy person will inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God. For a greedy person is an idolater worshiping the things of this world. Uh, when was the last time you thanked God for anything? Mm. Not just when things are going good. I'm talking about when things are bad. Yes. When 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 you've been hacked. When when your account has been uh, hacked and, and you've lost money out of the bank because somebody got your uh, credit card number or or you're in a hospital, don't know what's wrong. Come yes. on, somebody. Yes. When, when did you thank God during that time? Or was it, oh, whoa, well, it's me. Oh, well, I'm speaking from experience, folks. My wife will tell you, my kids will tell you. Yeah, I, I've been in the hospital with severe pain. I've had, I've had blood transfusions. I've had infection after infection. I went through it. I went through it. Was it, was it fun? The heck, no, it was not fun. But I tell you something, during all that time, I thank God. I thank God that I was still, and my wife and my kids can testify that every nurse would come into to my hospital room, my bedside, I would minister to them. Why? Because that's what God has called me to do. As long as I have breath in these lungs, I'm going to minister to somebody when God opens the door for me to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ and let them know their purpose of Christ. Amen? Amen. That's what we need to do. Thank God in everything. Yes. Because when we thank God even during the bad times, folks, let me tell you something. He's going to pull you through it. Yes. That's what you need to thank God. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. Can I get an amen? Listen, when you thank God for the rough times and the bad times, God is faithful and, and just. He'll pull you through it. He will never leave you forsaken. The Bible tells us that. Now, if we believe that, that even when times are bad, Yes. Even when times really stink like the worst sewer you've ever smelled, God is faithful and just yes. to pull you through that. Yes. Even when it's hard. Yes. Even in times of loss. Yes. Going on over two little two going on two years since uh, in October since uh, we buried my father when he passed when and left us. And even through that time, I had to thank God for the life that I had with him. The memories, the times. It's hard. It's hard. I'm not going to stand behind this pulpit and lie. Oh, yeah, everything was peachy. No, it wasn't. It was very hard. It was very difficult. Every during that time, as I was thanking God, I was contemplating stepping away from the ministry. But my wife and a dear friend of mine, <clears throat> took time to pull me away to show me where God, where God wanted, what my father would have wanted. Yes. My heavenly father and my worldly father to, to continue on and push forward in the ministry. That's why we're here today. We revamped our ministry and we're, we're restarting up. And, and the, the enemy thinks that COVID-19 is going to stop us from preaching. He got a wrong, got the wrong idea. Because we're still moving forward. Amen? Amen. God is still large and in charge, and he's sitting <clears throat> on the throne. And we're pushing forward so we see him again. Let's move on. Go ahead and continue, Pastor Shannon. 
Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins, for the anger of God will fall on all who disobey him. Don't participate in the things people do. Fact. Don't be fooled. Listen, this is why I tell you, you got to be into your word, because there's even men and women behind a pulpit preaching false doctrine, preaching this prosperity movement, preaching this what you've been saved, you're always saved garbage. It's not true, folks. They don't need your money. God don't need your money. But it's a matter of being obedient and sending your tithes and offering in to the church that you are attending to, to help them promote, to push the gospel, to keep it going. But for them to be driving around a Lamborghini and you're driving around a 72 Pinto, <clears throat> come on. It's, it's, it's false doctrine. Be careful of what you listen to. Make sure you're being taught from the Word of God and, and the preachers preaching from the Word of God. Amen? Let's Amen. move on. Don't participate in the things people do, for you were once full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. So live as people of light, for this light within you produces only what is good and right and true. Now, I know about this firsthand, folks, because you know why? I lived in darkness for way too long. And when, you know what? When I surrendered and gave myself to the Lord, things changed. Now all I want to do is continue to preach the gospel and share the light. I want to show the light. Am I successful every day? No. Do I make mistakes? I absolutely do. And sometimes my light is very dim. But you know what? That's why I have my accountability. That's why I have my kids. I have my wife. That's why I have certain pastor friends to hold me accountable. Pastor Charles Butanero is a great man. He's always in contact with me. He's always checking up on me and always seeing. And when I fall short, he doesn't have a problem. And I love that man dearly. So surround yourself with good people that's going to be honest with you. A good friend will tell you when you're blowing it. Amen. Not, not write, write a false check and, and, and condone that. A good friend will always tell you, come on, you're blowing it, man. Get back up, Tucker. Get back up, Gabriel. Come on, Miracle. Watch your attitude. God will always yes. put Amen. people to hold you accountable. Amen. Let's read on. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them. It is shameful to even talk about things that ungodly people do in secret. But their evil intentions will be exposed when the light shines on them. Stop. God will always shine the light on Father. That's what he's doing now in the last days. Look at what's going on. And all these false prophets, all these false teachers, all these false, false preachers of the gospel are being exposed. Pay attention to it. Pay attention. When you see somebody breaking the law, having services with hundreds of people, and they're not wearing masks, and they're not practicing what the government is not, that's false teaching. When you have people having church services outside their family, we're here in my home. All that's here are my kids and my wife. And we're having service here. We're streaming it for you to keep safe. Why? Because we're in obedience with the law. But when you have a building, you got service, and you're not practicing social distancing, which I've seen on camera and on other ministries that I check, and when you're sitting next to each other with no masks and socializing, with people, you're in disobedience to God. I'm telling you right now, you're in disobedience to God. Yes. Obey the law. He says, that's what he says in the word. Obey the, obey the law. Either you're a follower of Jesus Christ or, or you're against him. He says, you're either for me or against me. Yes. Figure that out. Let's wrap this up. Uh, I said 1 through 14. We're going to read chapter 14. I mean, uh, verse 14 right now. Then we're going to wrap it up. For the light makes everything visible. This is why it said, Awake, O sleeper, rise up from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Okay, so I want to end with this right here. He says, For the light makes everything visible. You know, when you go in the house, you turn off all the lights, try to walk around your house, even though you know the layout. Walk around the house and let me know how many times you stub your toe. Because it's dark. It's dark. That's how you, if you have... Don't have Christ in you. You are walking in darkness. You're walking in dark, spiritual darkness. And again, I wanted to share because this is who I was before God came into me. I thought I knew it all. I knew nothing. 
walk in the light because it makes everything visible. This is why the Lord said, okay, awake, O sleeper. That's not saying, oh, the alarm clock's going off. It's saying your spiritual alarm clock is going off. God is knocking at the door. He wants you to open up because he wants something better for you. He wants something better for you. Awaken. Let God open your eyes. We're all awake right now. And some of you are watching right now by, by uh, YouTube or you're watching right now by Facebook. And you're still spiritually dead. That means you're still living in darkness. But God is saying, awaken. Arise. I want to show you the beauty that I have for you. Awaken. Yes. Yes. Rise up from the dead. Yes. And yes. Christ will give you the light. He, folks, he's talking to spiritual, talking about spiritual stuff here. He wants us to be awakened spiritually. He wants us to use discernment. He wants us to, to, to follow the voice of God. Amen. Can I get an amen on amen. that? God wants amen. us to follow. He's calling you for a reason. So yes. listen, I want to end with this. Um, I know I'm going a little er over. Uh, but I'm just so stirred up from this. God is calling you to a bigger and deeper relationship with Him. I don't know what you've been through in your life. I don't know what you've been through in the last past week. I know it's been kind of trying for a lot of people. You know, we hear all the time on the news the, the, the rate, the numbers are going higher and higher of people being infected by COVID. You're not using wisdom, people. Stay indoors when you go out. Use a mask. If you yes. buy gloves, work, be careful what you do. Be careful. People are dying left and right on this thing. But God has called us to use wisdom. Yes. I don't know what you've been through in your, in your life. I don't know if you've been through a bad divorce. I don't know if you've been abused. My wife and I, we both, we've shared this before with people. And when we do our marriage counseling and, and, and marriage seminars, you know, we both come from a background of sexual abuse, and, and, and we don't know, but we do know this, that there was no way through it other than through Christ. Yes. I was an ex-drug dealer, drug addict, alcoholic, womanizer, and God has set me free from all that. God can do the same for you. Yes. And if you don't know Christ, and maybe you do, and maybe you backslidden and, and you want to come back to the Father, the Bible says Christ is that he's buried to the backside. That's why he went to the cross. So we're going to give you an opportunity right now. All you got to do is a few simple things. Admit that you were a sinner. Admit that yes. you have fallen. Admit that Jesus Christ is the Lord of all lords and that he died on the cross for you. And that he was resurrected on the third day. Yes. And ask the Father to come into your heart. You don't have to go through this big old ceremony. Just go to your room. Kneel. Kneel in your front room right now by your couch. And just say, Father, I'm a sinner. But I need your love. I receive your son, Jesus Christ, as my Lord and Savior. I know that he died on the cross and was raised on the third day for me. And now I'm asking Jesus to come into my heart. Yes. And to take control of my life. If you've done that. We believe you've been born again. Now I'm asking wherever you're hearing me from, find a Bible-based teaching church or continue to watch us on Facebook and live on YouTube uh, and Facebook. If you need to contact us, you can contact us through fightthegoodfightministries.com. If you have any prayer requests, you'll find options there on how to contact us so that we can pray with you, contact you, the ways that we can correspond with one another so that, you know why, you can be better fed uh, yes. of, of the Word of God. And you know that people love you out there. Jesus loves you. God loves you. We yes. love you. And you know what, folks? There's nothing you guys can do about it. We serve the most high God. We serve a good, true, living God. And He loves you. That's why He's got you tuning in this morning. So if you want this relationship that we speak of, my wife and I, and that we teach about, please, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Contact us. Let us know what you guys think. And we're going to be uh, setting up, um, my wife and I are going to be doing uh, live streaming uh, on Mondays here starting in, in August, August, 3rd. August 3rd. And uh, we'll be having special guests and we're going to have teenagers that are going to join in on us, you know, with us. Uh, my daughter and, and Tucker, you know, we're going to have other people that's going to join. Uh, we're going to have a segment with Pastor Charles Butanero who's going to come join us. And we're going to have other speakers uh Follow along with us. Amen. So we're going to put out a weekly blog and stuff. And so check us out on YouTube and friend us. Tell a friend about uh, Facebook. 
every board, Sunday morning, 1030, we are going to be streaming live. And uh, then we'll be putting our messages out. We love you. God bless you. And we we'll look forward to hearing from you and seeing you. From Fight the Good Fight Ministries, I'm Pastor Vic. And Jesus loves you and I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. God bless you. Mm -hmm.